Hi, I'm Ralph Dimikas. Welcome to the 2017 forecast. We're of course going to start with January, and this is the forecast for the planetary calendar. Published for many, many years, I am one of the astrologers, along with Lonnie Diamikas. And it's a very interesting year we're coming into. Now, when you go through the calendar, okay, and I'm going to take a quick picture of it, okay, snap, so you can see what it looks like, you will notice that there are little letters periodically. Let's see, let's find one here. You'll see the A there. When you go to the forecast in the text, you will see that letter referenced again. This way, as you're going through the individual days, when you see a letter, it means read the section up above related to that letter because something's going on, something interesting that you might want to know about. Okay, we did this this year in order to make the calendar more interactive with the forecast. You know, I, re I use the calendar and at the beginning of each month, I read my forecast and I forget about it. And then halfway through the month, something unusual happens. I think, what's going on? And maybe I go back and I read the forecast and say, oh, right, I warned myself about that. But I didn't warn myself about it in advance that month. So I put that reference in there, so I'll look and say, oh, there's a C there, what's going on on the C day? Oh, okay, a planet's changing direction, a planet's moving into a new sign, uh, it's an important lunation, something like that. So that's how you use it. As you're going through the days, look for the letters and then look in the text. So, speaking of the text, let's actually look at what the text says for uh, January 2017. The year is starting off in a dreamy, introspective, compassionate mood. And that's because Venus is entering her exalted sign of Pisces on the second. Exalted means that it's the honored guest. And Venus and Pisces, which is, you know, Venus is the goddess of love, but she also is the warrior goddess, depending upon how she shows up in the chart is the honored guest because she is in the sign of compassion. Okay, compassion is important. Or someone recently said to me, you know, the metaphysical F word is forgiveness. And Pisces is the part of the chart where we forgive others. Also, we have a retrograde Mercury going on. So, you know, things are always kind of, already kind of slowed down a little bit with that Mercury running retrograde, and it actually backs out of Capricorn into Sagittarius on the 4th. Sagittarius is the detriment sign of Mercury. In other words, why? Mercury is in rulership in Virgo and Gemini, and the opposite sign from Gemini, the rulership sign, is Sagittarius. So it means when Mercury is in Sagittarius, he thinks he's Jupiter. He acts in ways that are Jupiterian, but he's still Mercury. And so it's not considered an effective position for Mercury. So as we're entering this month, Venus is moving into a really strong sign for her. She's treated to all kinds of special stuff, while Mercury is like saying, is a little clueless. Okay, so in terms of practical organizational stuff, eh, everything's going to be a little slow, a little stymied. But in terms of love stuff, things are going to go along beautifully. Although, as I said, in a very kind of Venusian um, dreamy, introspective, compassionate way. Okay? So take the time this first week to review your accomplishments from the previous year and set your goals for the year at hand. This is especially smart because while Mercury and Sag is not considered a strong position, it can be a very visionary position. Remember, Sagittarius is about looking towards the future. Mercury typically does best when he's right in the moment, but here Mercury is thinking about the future, so use the energy that way. Take that first week, think about your vision for the future, where you want your life to be at in this coming year, and work out your plan. You know, if you don't have a goal, if you don't have a goal, how are you going to know where you're aiming? Right? Okay. On the 8th, oh, Mercury turns direct 
right? And then picks up speed and enters Capricorn, re-enters Capricorn on the 12th. So by the 8th, especially by the 9th, once you know it comes off of that station, you're going to start find things moving forward again. And Capricorn's a relatively strong position for uh, Mercury. It's not, it's not exalted, it's not a rulership position, but it's actually, because it's in trine to Virgo, the rulership position, it's a position in which Mercury knows how to get things done. Okay, so this is a, by the 12th, when it goes into Capricorn, he'll be picking up speed. Projects will start moving forward again. You know, that first 12 days of the month, you might find your projects are a little bit stymied. Okay, so, and that on the 12th is also the full moon. Let's bring up the full moon chart, okay? So Mercury is going into Capricorn on the 12th. Lots of energies going on. On the 12th, this means that the uh, moon is in Cancer, her rulership position. So the moon is real, real strong out here on the west coast in California. The, char the full moon is at night, so you're going to see this big full moon, as bright as she gets, at least during this lunation, right at the midheaven, right overhead uh, on, the, on the 12th, at, well, on the 12th at 3.30 3 a.m. So it's going to have a lot of oomph going on. Also, there's a, a real nice trine by sign between that moon in Cancer and a whole lineup of planets in Pisces. This is by sign, okay, and this is not partile, it's not the exact degree, but in other words, these other planets are in a water sign, primarily Pisces. But you have Chiron, Mars, Neptune, Venus, the South Node, and Pallas Athena, all in Pisces, supporting this moon in Cancer. And the moon is conjunct the, the Vesta is conjunct Vesta, the asteroid that relates to having a mission, especially a feminine mission. So it's going to be a lot of feminine energy going on. And remember, the sun in Capricorn is in a feminine sign, and it's conjunct Pluto. So this is a pretty profound full moon. There's going to be a lot of emotion about this full moon. In fact, actually, when you look at the chart, there's very few things that are actually in masculine signs, primarily um, Mercury, and Saturn and Juno are all clustered together. Saturn is a pretty heavyweight planet. Mercury is actually in the 29th degree of Sagittarius, so just about to tip into Aquarius, a sign that he likes very much, and Vest, or Juno in between. And then, it, so that's primarily the masculine energy in the charts, um, though that's trining Uranus and Aries, and that's you know also very masculine. But in terms of personal planets, a lot of the stuff that's going on is of the personal planets are all in feminine signs. Jupiter is also in a masculine sign, but it's Libra. And as we know, Libra is the sign that is kind of the least masculine of the masculine signs uh, because it's really about creating balance. Also, it's at 22 degrees Libra. That's conjunct the star... Um, Spica. Spica is the grain of wheat, the head of the grain of wheat held in the hand of the Virgin, Virgo, the largest constellation in the sky. It's a feminine archetype. So we have the moon conjunct Vesta, a feminine archetype, and you have Jupiter and Libra conjunct a major feminine archetype where a major number of the important planets in the chart are all in feminine signs. This is this full moon on the 12th of January is going to be a very, very feminine energy. Very empowering. Okay. Um, what else did I write here? Yeah, so on that 12th, on that full moon, I wrote drivers, star your engines, because energy is going to really be revving up. Get to work, and what you're going to do is you're going to aim for a big push on the 16th, or January 16th. Why January 16th? The full moon is when everything is kind of, the flower is really, really there. But the fragrance is strongest after the full moon. It's when the sun is trying 120 degrees from the moon. That's actually the expression time, or I might say the fruiting time. That's when the energy moves towards the fruit. Remember, there's the rose on the top, but there's the rose hip underneath, which is what it's all about. That's the seed. And as we know, it's very high in vitamin C and vitamin A. That's why people take rose hips. It's very high in vitamin A and vitamin C and very easy on the tummy. Much easier than taking those big, you know, crunchy uh, vitamin C tablets. Much better for you. Much more complex. Roses are very complex. 
Okay? Now, this is cool, and I talked about this a little bit. From January through February, Jupiter is very close to the, I sorry, I put it here, powerful, beneficial, feminine star, Spica. Okay? So diligence, dedication, and hard work are the rule. This is one of the very important stars. It's not considered a, ro a royal star, but it's considered one of the most significant stars, Spica. The royal stars are the ones that give you the four compass directions, and Regulus being the nearest one in this particular case, Antares being the, one, the other one to the other side of Spica. Um, in ancient times, these were the ones that they would know that it gave you north, south, east, west, even when there was a huge amount of haze in the, in the, the heavens you know, from clouds, because they're very, very bright. But Spica is also very bright. And above Spica in the sky, to, if you follow Spica to the north, um, towards the pole, you come to, um, not Aldebaran, who is it? In the constellation Bautis is, uh, the, is the star of the shepherd. Blanking on it at this particular moment. But it will come back to me. So that area there has a lot to do with watching over others. Now, uh, this is cool too on that 12th. It's not an exact trine or exact sextile. And sometimes when we're talking about the forecast, people will say, oh, well, I'm looking at the calendar and it doesn't say that there's a trine there. When we're saying there's a trine on the calendar, okay, we're talking it's exact. It's exact to the degree and exact to the minute and exact to the second. That's the exact true. But when you're talking about um, a trine between, or a sextile in this case, between Saturn and Jupiter, these are relatively small, slow moving planets. Though that sextile is active for a long period of time. You know, the, the orb that we're working with is about five degrees. So it can go on for three, four, five weeks. So when you see it right there in the center, realize it's effective beginning and after that point. Okay, and that's why we talk about it in the forecast. So if you see the forecast and it doesn't say, you don't see it exactly on the calendar, don't call up the publisher. That's not how it works. That's not how astrology works. Astrology is a process of overlapping energies and overlapping changes. So a helpful Jupiter, sextile Saturn at the full moon on the 12th, continues moving the economy along nicely, but not spectacularly through the winter. Okay, a sextile between Sun and Jupiter, it's very, very good for business. A trine might be better, a little more dramatic, but a sextile is very, very nice. It's a very harmonious aspect, okay? But it's gonna be good, but not spectacular. At the same time, okay, at E, let's go to E. On the 16th, see, I have to look at the calendar too. At E, so societal polarities will be highlighted by the cardinal cross. Okay, there's a big cardinal cross going on in the chart um, between these lunations, uh, between Capricorn, Cancer, uh, Uranus, and Jupiter. So it's a powerful one, okay? And the full moon is what triggers it. Normally, there's just a T cross between the Jupiter opposite. Uh, Uranus, and then both of them square uh, Pluto and the Sun. That's the, it's been an ongoing cross. And these things are normally there. It's when these, these T's are the things that kind of move things forward. They become the, the crux issues about moving things forward. And, uh, but when you have the Moon and Vesta now fill out the fourth part of that T, you now have a cross, which means that you have a lot of Polarities, and that's what I'm talking about here. Societal polarities will be highlighted by the Cardinal Cross, the peacemakers and the insurgents, the power-seeking conservatives and the dedicated humanists will take their corners, holding on to their convictions. But thanks to a well-placed moon in Jupiter, the feminine nurturers hold the upper hand as the year of the fine fire monkey winds down. Remember the Chinese New Year is ending this time of year. Okay, but it definitely is a very, very feminine time. F on the 27th. The Aquarius new moon on the 27th, and that's this chart here. The Aquarius new moon on the 27th. It's the new moon, okay? Denotes an early spring 
ushering the Chinese New Year's Yin Fire Rooster celebrated the next day. Okay, the Chinese New Year is the new moon in Aquarius. It's when all the energy pulls into the earth. It's the time when you can balance an egg on end. Okay, uh, kind of interesting. This is the year of the rooster, but the yin rooster, but it's the fire rooster, very, very energized rooster. It means basically that um, Jupiter is kind of in charge that year. When they talk fire in a, um, in a Chinese chart, it means it's basically a Jupiter energy at work. Okay, which is different from heat. When they talk about heat in Chinese medicine, they're talking about Mars, but uh, or the or the sun. But when you're talking about fire, you're talking about Jupiter. Expect the seeds to germinate early this year because the rooster is arriving with a firecracker bang, thanks to Mars entering Aries on the same day. So on that new moon on January 27th, the Chinese New Year, Mars is at 29. 49 Pisces. So right at the Chinese New Year, Mars is going to enter Aries, his ruling sign, and go cock-a-doodle-doo. Things are going to get really waking up, woken up early. And this concept of, you know, the, the groundhog in the early spring, I really think it comes from how early in Aquarius does the Chinese New Year come? Because for farmers, it all came down to when are the seeds germinating? And essentially, the Chinese New Year denotes when the seeds are going to germinate. They don't germinate really, or they begin to germinate right at that new moon in Aquarius. That's the marker. That's what sets it off. It's when all the energy pulls back into the earth, condenses in the seeds, and the seeds go, whoa. <laughs> right? So that's the beginning of the process. Well, you know, it doesn't matter if it's getting warmer or not, but the seeds are in the earth germinating. So an early spring. Okay. Let's see. Physical energy rises along with that sparkle in your eye. So initiate projects and get ready for love because Valentine's Day is just around the corner and spring is early this year. And believe me, we feel it in our bodies when spring is early. So I'm also going to do a Chinese New Year forecast that will be on the site as well here at spaceandtime.com in more detail because in that we actually take the overall um, picture of the world. We use astrocartography. We look at the major lines around the planet and see what areas are going hot and cold this year and such. And it's really remarkably um, accurate. It's funny. Uh, one of the things I didn't spot last year, uh, and I'm doing this in actually 2016, so from when you're seeing this, I didn't, I didn't see the vote in England where they, the Brexit. I didn't, I didn't talk about that. Well, the reason I didn't talk about it is that on the astrocartography, the major dynamic was there was a rising sign of Pallas Athena, which meant legal issues. Yeah, okay, it's England. They practically invented the courts. And the major line in the area was the IC line, it meant the line below your feet of Jupiter in Virgo. Well, the thing about Jupiter in Virgo, and even though Virgos theoretically would love having Jupiter in Virgo, is Jupiter in Virgo is a weak position. And the reason is the traditional rulers of Jupiter are Sagittarius, you probably know that, but the feminine ruler is Pisces. Okay, everyone says, oh, it's Neptune. No, the feminine ruler traditionally is Pisces. The opposite sign from Pisces is Virgo. So it normally would be considered a detriment position. It means it doesn't function that well. When you have an IC line on an area in terms of Jupiter, which is expansionism, you know, a global view, and it's in the sign about the home, and it's in a sign that doesn't function well, and Jupiter relates, Pisces, you know, relates to the feet, Jupiter relates to the feet also, the feet and the thighs, it really means you could really stub your toe. Also, Virgo is traditionally the sign of the working man, of the working person, or the working per girl, really, because it's Virgo. Uh, you know, it's the, all, during harvest, it was all the girls there who would be sorting through all of the grains and doing all of the gathering of the grains. And this was traditionally the women who, get, you know, f gathered the grains. The men went out and hunted. But when you go to back to the Paleolithic era, it was the women who gathered the herbs, not the men. The men went hunting. So that's why Virgo is feminine. Well, but it relates to the working man. It's the man who wears, you know, dungarees to work. And 
who were the people who voted for Brexit, it, were the, it was the working class that voted for Brexit to get them out, to take them out of the global community. And Jupiter saying, oh, let's do the global community. If it had been reversed with Jupiter above the midheaven, and we've had other years recently where Jupiter has been above, but in different signs, um, it was great for England. Their, their economies with, the economy was doing great things. Their banking was just going fantastic. But this year it was the working people below their feet stubbing their toe and saying no to this global connection, no to having people on the other side of the ocean, Jupiter, Pisces, over the other side of the ocean, affecting our lives. Maybe I missed up, you think? But I didn't spot that because when I do the forecast, honestly, I look at who are the movers and shakers, who are the people, where the, where is, basically where, this, where is the money going to or where is the money showing up? Eh, I guess it's kind of an American prejudice. American focus. So that's the forecast for January. Remember, you can watch the forecast for um, planetary calendars for February right here, spaceandtime.com. And I hope you have a great month. <laughs>